slideshow or whatever. So I'm actually on a bus right now. The bus is called the 162 for those of y'all who live in Toronto and know about the 162. To me, this is the best bus ride in the entire city. Um, it's next stop, quiet, it's chill. Lane and uh, next stop, Park Lane Circle. Remember? Dark Lane demo tapes. So Drake lives on Park Lane Circle somewhere. Um, I, in fact, this bus like literally passes the front of his house. Um, so yeah, and it's interesting because I've been on this bus before and uh, I remember it was a girl that was like, she. I guess she'd never been to Drake's place or whatever, but you know, she must've known Drake or something like that. And she was like, oh, is this the stop? Whatever, she was trying to figure out the bus stop. Um, and so the driver did let her off right in front of Drake's place. And uh, the driver was like, yo, can I come in? <laughs> Uh, he was kidding, but you know, at the same time, I'm sure he was also like, not nah, like, please let me in, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, just want to do a quick RFP video uh, to Hurricane G and Tang One. Um, you know, anyone that knows me knows I'm a big Hurricane G fan, always been a Hurricane G fan. Um, I think the first time I heard Hurricane G, because she was real underground. Um, the very first time I heard Hurricane G was that um, PE 2000, you know, definitely. But I didn't know it was, you know, it was her necessarily, of course, because PE 2000 was a big song at the time. So, um, didn't even know it was a public enemy beat, you know, it was just a Puff Daddy record. I remember I was like, oh, I kind of like the song, actually, the song's kind of dope at that time. So this is like 2099, whenever that came out. But the first time I kind of, I would say, really knew who the hell Hurricane G was, was fairly recently. I mean, within the last decade, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because even though I'd heard Tonight's Tonight, and I, you know, I'd heard Hurricane G past the Gat Sun, and, you know, I was like, oh, that's Hurricane G. I never, I didn't really put two and two together until I actually really listened to Dare's the Dark Side. Uh, and that was maybe in the late 2000s or something like that. And uh, obviously I really loved it. I was just like, oh my God, this girl's killing it. Who the hell is this? You know what I mean? And then it was like, oh, it's Hurricane G. Oh, that's the girl from, you know, <laughs> from Pax the Gat and all that kind of stuff. And I've been a fan ever since because obviously, you know, I thought she was mad cute, you know, and she could rhyme and, you know. So let me go into a little sidebar. And I think this is why Hurricane G, even though she wasn't really known, to definitely a casual rap fan, why I think her loss is going to hit hip hop harder to a certain degree because, you know, we like Hurricane G. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hurricane G is like, in my opinion, that total package, at least on camera. I never met her a day in my life. I don't know who's, you know, her as a person. But, you know, it's tough to find people in general. And I'm not just going to talk about women, but I'm a man, so I'm going to talk about women in this case. But it's it's hard to find women that are attractive outside as they are inside, right? And I'm sure women can say the same thing for men as well. You know, it's hard to find a man that's like stand out attractive and then also like internally stand out attractive where they're just that cool, you know, they're not controlling or, you know, weird. Uh, they're respectful, you know, they, to find that total package, it's, it's always very difficult. So when you see it, or a semblance of it, you know, it, it's it's super attractive, right? Like, and that's what I got with her in Eugene. Like, when I saw her in the video, and saw pictures of her, I was like, oh my god, like, I, I really love the energy of this chick, and I love how she's rhyming, and how fly she is with the, you know, the Spanglish and the mix, and then I'm seeing, like, how she looks like, and I'm like, oh my god, and she cute? You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> That's a rare bird, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by that. It's just like, those are the people that you, you miss for, you know? So when somebody uh, like that, who appears to be, you know, both internally and externally beautiful, like it does something to you. I mean, this is why we talk about Aaliyah, right? Like Aaliyah's loss was so big because Aaliyah was gorgeous. I mean, like anybody like myself who's growing up by that time, we looked at Aaliyah as like, this girl was gorgeous, but she was also mad cool and fly and just like, you know, innovative all at the same time. You're just like, oh my fucking God, you know what I'm saying? 
Park Lane, you know. Um, so this is the whole point, right? So that's why you feel it a little more. So anyways, like I said, been a big fan, you know. Yo, yo, man, man, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm always like, you know what I mean? And you guys know this. I post this in the in the channel, like, I think not even a couple of days ago. Um, we talked about that tonight's Thanks. night video, right? So, yeah, man, uh, big loss. Obviously, just the way she came. Look at her, Ricky. She is We run you, motherfuckers, you know? Let's see if I can actually come up with that and start. Let me pass it. This might be it, actually. It's around here somewhere. Um, you know, the bus is moving, so, you know, they're not really going to be able to see it. Let me try and hold it, but it's kind of slow. I think this is actually, yeah, I don't know. this is Drizzy's, yeah, I think this is actually Drizzy's place. Yep, security, 24-hour security, that's it, you know, six gods, anyway. So, um, as I was saying, you know, I, I loved how she just came on, and that's, and again, that's the thing that I think is fascinating, like, whenever I've always talked about how there's like a thousand rappers better than Kendrick and, and J. Cole, like, I really mean that shit, and I know that, you know, the stands in the comment section get mad when I say that, they're like, prove it, prove it, and it's like, well, listen, like, obviously, you haven't heard enough rap, so you you think what I'm saying is ludicrous, but for those who have, and as I'm sure some of y'all are starting to really see all the stuff I'm posting, you're like, oh my god, actually, Tochi has a point. There is a lot of people who can rap. There's a lot of people that can rap. You know what I'm saying? And yes, in terms of fame and popularity, Kendrick and J. Cole are much more famous, and they are some of the most famous rappers ever. So that's why I can understand for somebody who's young, they might look at it and look at it as a popularity contest. But the thing is, Rap, obviously, why it's become corny is that it's devolved into a popularity contest. You know what I'm saying? And the reality is, marketing and popularity are transient. Like, they, you know, they last, what, like five years? Maybe even 10 years or some shit. You know what I'm saying? But creativity is always everlasting. So the point is, I mean, anything can be marketed if it hits with the right audience at the right time and all that shit. But creativity is the thing that really lasts. And that's the shit that really stands out. When we look at people that are legends, we look at them because they're creative. And I really want to stress that. This is why, again, I've always put the Pop Smokes and the Playboy Cardis and the ASAP Rockies ahead of everyone else. Because they're clearly the most creative. I don't even think it's close. I honestly don't even think we can debate that shit. You know what I'm saying? The creativity that those guys come out with compared to their peers is next level compared to their peers. And we know this. It's super obvious. And that's why I'm like, I know that these are the guys that are going to yeah, go down as being remembered because that's, I've seen it. It's just obvious. You know what I'm saying? Creativity. When Redman had the video and he's like, wow, man, you know, I can really, you know, relax the tongue, take a cruise, you know, take my mic a cruise around the planet, pack him in like Janet Jackson. She's asking him if I can slap it. I'm ready. The freaking record scratch when Hurricane comes out and it's like, yo, Redman, what the fuck? Yeah, so that's creative. Yeah, that's super creative. The fact that a girl, <laughs> a girl interrupted, like, <laughs> and she's the hardest one in the crew, she packs the Desert Eagle, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people weren't doing this shit, like, it's, <laughs> that's smart, that's smart, man. That's some creative shit, and this is what I'm saying, like, things like that introduce people to go, oh my god, I should check out who this person is, who the hell is this, right? Creativity. And that alone, that intro alone made Hurricane G a legend. Real shit. In fact, I can't remember which artist it was recently that did yes. that. It might have even but been Rocky or somebody it, in the ASAP mob that did something like that where they ran rhyming and then they, you know, they did the Hurricane G thing, essentially, the Redman Hurricane G thing, right? So, I, I want to say it was Rocky. And if it's Rocky, well, like I said, hip-hop, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it might have been on testing, actually. Um, but anyways, the fact of the matter is that shit like that makes someone stand out and you respect stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, man, R.I.P. Always loved her, you know, her style. Um, I was shocked, you know, my man Antoine was the one that actually, you know, notified me. I was just like, what the hell? Just ruined my freaking Sunday. <laughs> Um, because like I said, I, I've always liked that energy and in a way it's kind of like, I had, obviously I had a crush on her energy in that regard. Um, you know what's mad funny? And I'll tell you, this is some real hip hop shit to a certain degree. 
I was like, man, when I get married, you know how you have to do security wedding and shit. <laughs> I was like, I might put people in New York on that list. You know what I'm saying? Me and my wife would be part, you know, like performing that shit. I like, that's how much I love that record. Because to me, that's like Bonnie and Clyde type of thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, you want a girl that's like, act, you know, playful and fun, aggressive and, you know, just but also intelligent. And, you know, the whole lot. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I even thought about that. I was like, damn, like, it'd be kind of cool to do that uh, at the wedding. But of course, I don't know. You know, it's like a certain audience. But you get my point. Like, that's how much I like that damn record. You know what I mean? So, you know, all right. Lastly, let me talk about Tame. So, Tame 1, uh, I honestly didn't really listen to Tame 1 that much. Um, you know, the artifacts, I heard of the artifacts, and again, in the kind of the mid to late 2000s when I was doing a lot of digging um, into rap. And um, I think they have a Dilla remix. Yeah, yeah, they have a Dilla remix. That's like I think the first song I ever heard because I was I, in the mid 2000s. I did a massive Dilla dive, and uh, that's actually how I found out about the artifacts. That I never heard of them, but I would literally, I literally looked up like just about every Dilla beat I could get my hands on. Um, so and I listened to them, but you know I was never really big on them. I got to be honest with you. you know, so I, I don't want to. I'm not saying that as on some disrespectful shit or. You know, I just want to be one of these guys that's like pretending to be like, I don't know, Team One was the greatest ever, man. I was such a master of archetypes, right? But, you know, it's like, uh, oh, are you sure, man? You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas be dick riding, you know, for clout, right? Uh, I think Team One was talented. I mean, I think artifacts were talented, no doubt. Uh, but I just didn't really listen to them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't say that uh, um, the songs I heard by them didn't really hit me. That's all, you know, but I could deep dive, and, and if, unfortunately, it, it has taken, you know, until yes, take one step now, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I will actually try to, like, you know, listen to the whole album, but I remember checking out a bunch of their joints and not really liking them, man. You know, I gotta be honest with you. Um, now, um, so the song I posted, I think, just recently that I found, I think it's Wrong Side of Tracks um, remix with Busta on it. I think, or is it Come On With The Get Down? It was one of those two, but... That's probably the best song I've heard from them. You know, because, again, I like the beat. You know what I'm saying? And I always stress this, right? Because, yeah, someone says, well, what about the rapper, right? Yes. Beats, beats, beats. I love rapper. I love lyricism. You know this. But at the same time, I was more of a Hurricane fan because Hurricane had a better voice to me. Like, Tame. Tame was dope, obviously. He was super talented, you can tell. He could rap. He could say some funny shit. Um, vocally, I wasn't crazy about it. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was just good. It was, it was good vocally, but next stop, you know, not super, super sharp. And the other thing, I I, I couldn't really relate because he was a lot of the stuff was all graffiti shit, and I, you know, I never grafted, I never bombed a day in my life. Um, and next not to stop, say that that's a bad thing, but from. you know, again, this is what I mean. Like sometimes with rappers, like. They all pick a certain lane or a certain thing that they're about, and ultimately it's up to that audience to relate to, right? So I never really, like, I couldn't really get a grasp of who Tame One was, other than the fact that he liked to bomb and, you know, get head or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, there wasn't too, too much there for me. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, you know, talented cat, 100%. Rap, uh, without a doubt, you know, there's a lot of talented cats out here, man. And that's the thing you forget about the 90s when rap exploded. It was, it was an explosion of talent, it wasn't really an explosion. Now it's an explosion of popularity, and Next you, stop, should, you know what I'm saying? But before it was, it was an explosion in rap talent, you know what I'm saying? And that's what made rap become that chunk. But RIP to both, man, and uh, damn. Who knows what Red Man's thinking about this whole shit? So shout out to all of them, man. Eric Sermon, of course, you know. Next stop, Yelp Street.